Hi, welcome to Netscape Neurology. I'm Dr. Catherine Lefever. I'm a neurologist and movement uh, disorder specialist in Saratoga Springs, New York. And I have the pleasure today to talk to Dr. Indu Submaranian, who's the director of the Southwest Patrick Center at the VA uh, in sunny Los Angeles, California. And we are here to talk about her um, exciting paper recently published in Movement Disorders entitled Unmet Needs of Women Living with Parkinson's Disease, Gaps and Controversies. And uh, Dr. Submaranian is the first author of that paper. So thank you for this important work and let's jump right in and um, share a little bit what, uh, why were you pursuing this topic? Yeah, so I mean, I think that the, the time frame of, of this pandemic has really, you know, made us all rethink about, you know, who's not being served, you know, what, what is happening with mistrust and healthcare and, you know, the vaccine campaigns and everything. So I've really been sort of um, really thinking about, you know, things a little outside the box of, you know, regular practice. And since a lot of us have been remote and had time to learn from each other, I think, you know, we've been kind of connecting, you and I, Catherine, have connected around a number of ideas. And similarly with a number of, you know, colleagues worldwide, thought leaders worldwide, um, I ended up running a virtual support group for a, over 100 interviews of thought leaders, including patient voices. And we had a lot of momentum around the unmet needs of women. Um, we interviewed a number of women, uh, younger women, older women, all, we had about five sessions in various panels. And I was really shocked to find out how little was known in this area and how much much passion and um, you know, interest there, there is in women trying to support each other um, through the pandemic, sort of starting their own virtual support groups. Um, internationally, there's been a huge, you know, cry for um, outreach towards each other and support. And I was just so impressed with that. And, you know, when women get together, many uh -huh. cool things happen as, you know, the person who's founded the Women in Neurology Group too. So uh -huh. I think, you know, we, we really can sometimes band together. So after those interviews, um, we had a number of the women say, you know, somebody really needs, needs to write a paper. We need to have a paper. And I was like, well, who's going to write the paper? We need to, somebody needs to write the paper. So um, I felt strongly that it should have a voice of the women themselves. And so I um, approached three of the women that we had interviewed, uh, Sonia Mathur, um, Rochelle Flanagan, and Anolien Usterban, um, who are all very unique, amazing advocates themselves, um, very international crew. Um, I spoke to Eleanor. Moro, who had been on the series as well, and she's just an amazing force of nature. She just um, started uh, the women's group at the Movement Disorder Society, and it's really, you know, trying to do, you know, some really important advocacy work in the European nations and, as well. So, so we ended up proposing this to the Movement Disorders Journal, and they accepted, and uh, we um, put together this Gaps and Controversies paper. And yeah, honestly, wonderful. Let me just interrupt you here. So I really want to point out, this is very unique, your group of offers, because you have, uh, so six women, Three are movement disorder specialists, and uh, yeah, just let's just kind of say that three of the authors are uh, physicians affected by Parkinson's themselves. So, so yeah, props for doing that, and and I think it sounds like it was all kind of organically growing from from your advocacy work. So that's wonderful. So, what was your process in, in defining these gaps? Tell us a little bit more about that. Yes, I mean, I think we looked at the existing literature and we were seeing, you know, there's been a number of, you know, papers out there. Um, there was also the Parkinson Foundation had done some work on, you know, some gaps and listed some things sort of in categories. Um, we asked the women themselves, they themselves created a survey to find out what, you know, were the unmet needs, um, a little doodle poll and sent it around some of the women that um, they had been working with in support groups. And so it really was an organic sort of, you know, coming together, meeting of a number of um, sort of uh, sources and really we wanted to put a bit of a psychosocial spin on it since we had women who were living with Parkinson's disease who themselves are healthcare providers as co-authors so um, rather than just focusing on just you know basic science of estrogen or you know um, just hormonal treatments it was really you know, what did they think needed to be represented? And so it kind of just came about organically. We we were just sort of brainstorming, just wrote things down and then kind of teased out, you know, what is known. And, um, you know, when you write these gaps papers, you, you're supposed to write, you know, what is known and then figure out what the, the gaps and controversies are from there. And you read our paper, you realize that very little is known. So um, it was very easy to, you know, sort of, um, you know, review the previous sort of work because there isn't a lot and a lot of it's conflicting data. But, you know, really thinking about what needs to be done, we sort of thought about a few, you know, major areas, including advocacy, including 
in you know, sort of uh, research uh, priorities and then also um, obviously treatment uh, and management kind of, uh, of of the women themselves living. Yeah, apartments. yeah. So you mentioned the hormonal differences and you know not everyone might know that but Parkinson's does have a strong uh, predilection for um, uh, men so you know that might be one of the reasons there hasn't been as much research specifically done on women so do you want to is what is um, biologically known about the differences or you know do you want to comment on that yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think we know a lot. In fact, some of that, um, the ratios are a bit different in Asia, for example, where it's much more sort of similar, the proportions of men to women. So we don't fully understand that. Um, and, you know, I think that, you know, there has been a sense that maybe estrogen is protective, um, whether this may be a, a way to help all patients in some way to, you know, help their progression. I think a lot of people have been doing this research, uh, but there's a lot of controversies about, you know, whether to, you know, give estrogen, give hormonal replacement therapy, give birth control pills, you know, all, there's not a lot known. There hasn't been a lot of collaboration around this. And I was actually pretty shocked to find out just in speaking to, to some researchers that, you know, it's much easier to do research on male mice because they don't have, you know, menses and things like that. And also in some of the genetic studies, they actually take out the X chromosome. So GWASs and stuff try to simplify. And so we're actually discounting a lot of information that serve, you know, 50% of the world population, not just in Parkinson's disease, but in all diseases. So I think, you know, as we're really thinking about how to meet people where they are, be culturally contextual with our care, gender and, you know, sex are a huge piece of this. And, um, you know, I think this is, you know, a very timely time for this paper to come out. And it's not just about, you know, women trying to fight for women themselves. It's really about advancing the whole, you know, state of the disease for everyone living with this disease in the country, in the world. And also, you know, all of us, as colleagues coming together, sitting at the table and understanding how to do this better for everyone living with Parkinson's, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So I like that uh, table that you included in the papers and the here. So really kind of going through the life cycle of a woman. And, you know, there are people with uh, young onset Parkinson's who are in their reproductive years when they get diagnosed. And as you mentioned before, there are gaps in, in knowledge around, um, you know, how would, uh, how is, um, um, menstrual cycles affecting Parkinson's, how to counsel um, people who might be pregnant, um, and then uh, throughout perimenopause, there might be other um, things. So, so what would be some of the main takeaways maybe for a movement uh, disorder specialist to keep in mind? Yes, I mean, I think the hormones can change, you know, how people are feeling. And a lot of women have reported, you know, feeling for the week before they have their menses that they feel worse. And it's one in four weeks that they're feeling bad. And sometimes they feel an extra need for levodopa or, you know, extra self-care strategies. Some of the women have said, you know, sometimes I might need a, a warm bath or, you know, extra yoga or, you know, a nap here and there. I just build this in, but they, to come together and see this, um, you know, sort of shown, graphically and to feel heard and seen has been just really exciting for the women because they've never seen this, you know, demonstrated in any sort of way before. And so when we really think about how to approach this, um, you know, for, for, our, our, for our clinicians out there, I think, you know, listening to women, understanding, you know, does the menstrual periods, um, do they affect, uh, you know, the the symptoms are there certain times of the month that women may feel worse and if they're they are feeling worse you know how to just like if you would for a migraine patient you know you might sort of change the sort of strategy a little bit in those time frames when things are exacerbating that's important the perimenopausal period so as women are going into pre-menopause and into menopause is a very important time frame too a lot of women report that their Parkinson's symptoms started at that time or that they had motor exacerbation. So that's another time frame to think about and, you know, perhaps considering hormone replacement therapy. I think pre-pregnancy counseling is absolutely important because there are some medicines that are not safe for women uh, to be taking in their pregnancy. And actually one of our co-authors is an OBGYN who's really amazing, who's actually pregnant right now with their fourth child, um, almost ready to deliver and has, you know, Parkinson's. And so this is a really real thing for her. And she's been advocating about, you know, a possible international registry that could be started for women who are pregnant, um, you know, and how can we, you know, help them through labor and, and beyond. And as we know, you know, many, many of the disease uh, manifestations in Parkinson's are not just motor. So there's a huge non-motor burden as well as mental health burden. And as we all know, as women, we, you know, with the hormone changes, these things can affect how we feel uh, from, you know, mood perspectives as well. So I think it's important to think about, you know, this in addition to these other 
things that um, make our treatment of this disease challenging, um, you know, but I, I do think that this is something that's not been historically spoken about and is so needed to be cared about. Wonderful. So yeah, thanks so much for for bringing this to everyone's forefront and attention. And I think we're coming kind of towards the end here. But um, what would you advise for for people in the movement disorder sphere who are interested in, in, in maybe researching this or connecting with others? What would be the best way to, to kind of go about that? Yeah, so I think if you can look at our, our paper and just see the kind of categories, I think that that's one thing just to acknowledge, you know, read it. I think it's a pretty easy read. Um, give it to your women with well, I've been doing that, you know, so that there, you can open up a dialogue because I think open communication is so important and it can actually help people to narrow down what the issues are when they see it written in paper. And I think, you know, um, obviously advocacy, education, empowerment is so key um, to building that trust and rapport with our patients. So I think that's really important. Secondly, if you're a woman who's interested in some of this work, um, I think the Movement Sort of Society has just started this, um, you know, pretty cool group uh, run uh, by Dr. Morrow and colleagues. And so, you know, join us. Um, the Women in Neurology Group is always interested in this kind of thing as well. So join us in those things as well. But for all clinicians who are, you know, out there who are men, women, or, you know, any anyone, I think, again, so personalized medicine and sort of that sort of bespoke care of the person who's sitting in front of you is just really, I think, the way to go from 2022 and beyond. And so I think thinking about, you know, the intersections of who is sitting in front of you and how this disease may affect them in their individual sort of body and in their individual symptoms and in their individual presentation and the psychosocial aspects of so many of our patients that we have not really thought about before, you know, if you're being a woman who's black it's your life experience is very very different than you know a white affluent male who has historically been the sort of focus of all of our research and most of our care historically so I think you know really thinking a little bit more open-minded about the populations that we're serving and hopefully we can come together um, I don't have all the solutions this is just sort of the start of more dialogue but I think you know we working together as a group of people who love this population want to serve them better can can really hopefully think about unique strategies and including the, the patient voices is I think part of the beauty of this paper and I hope that this um, does uh, sort of um, spark interest in including other patient voices for other papers moving forward as well. Wonderful. I think that was an excellent summary. So yeah, so listen to your patients, uh, get curious and uh, and uh, connect and really ask these questions that are really pertaining uh, to the person in front of you. And then uh, don't always, you know, just check off a, che a checklist. Uh, so wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing these findings. I encourage everyone to read the paper in Movement Disorders, Unmet Need of Women Living with Parkinson's Disease. So go find it. And uh, thanks everyone for joining us today.